Hey, I'm Lauren from TastyPC.TV, and as you can see, Asus have lent me seven of their high-end GPUs, with the idea that I do a review on one and use the rest to compare against. And seeing as I'm doing the benchmarks for the review anyway, and given that I've got nearly one of every high-end GPU that Asus currently does, which for a review of my size is pretty epic, I thought there was no way that I can have all these cards here all at the same time and not do some sort of massive comparison. So let's get started. So firstly we've got the R9 280X Matrix Platinum, and this is Asus's extreme overclocking variant of the 280X, as it comes with onboard voltage control buttons and an LN2 heatsink. And it's a pretty beastly card, it's got a triple slot cooler and an illuminated matrix logo, and it is currently the most expensive 280X you can get, coming in at roughly £300 according to scan. So next we've got the R9 290X, AMD's current single fastest GPU with their new Hawaii architecture. And the stock version of this card is supposed to run both quite loud and quite hot, um, but I'm going to be looking at Asus's DirectCU 2 cooler version, which is supposed to run both cooler and quieter. Um, but this card is currently available at £500 from Overclockers UK, but it's a very new card, so obviously that price will decrease over time. I also then have an Asus DirectCU2 overclocked version of the R9 290, and this is a late addition to the video and did mean I had to go back and refilm some stuff. But if you are interested in any of the cards in this list, then this is definitely one worth considering. Um, and it currently comes in at 390 quid from Overclockers UK, and has the same Hawaii core as the 290X with just slightly lower specs. Moving on, we've then got the Mars 760, and this is a dual GPU with two GTX 760s in SLI. And I've already done a quick initial look at this card in another video, and I'll put a link to that on screen now in case you want to watch it. Um, and this card currently comes in at £490 from Dabs. So next is the Asus Poseidon Platinum GTX 780, and this is a hybrid 780 where straight out the box you've got the option to either air cool it or water cool it. And this is the card that I'm going to be doing a separate full review on. Now in this video I've only tested the air-cooled performance of it, but obviously in a separate review I'm going to be water-cooling it and testing the water-cooled performance. Um, now this card was designed before the 780 Ti was released, which is the reason why it's only a 780, but I am happy people have got this option as long as Asus are quite quick with a 780 Ti variant. Um, but this card is currently £500 to pre-order from Scan. I also have the DirectCU 2 cooler version of the 780 to compare against, and this has got slightly lower specs than the Poseidon, and obviously doesn't have the Poseidon cooler, coming in at roughly £80 cheaper, currently being £420 from scan. And then lastly we've got the Asus DirectCU 2 GTX 780 Ti, and this is Nvidia's current flagship GPU in their 700 series, and it's going to be the most expensive card that I'm looking at at £615 from scan. Although obviously this is a newly released car, so still being sold at Asus's recommended retail price. And when I'm looking at the graphs, I'm obviously going to be taking the card's prices into consideration. But it is worth mentioning that obviously newly released cards versus kind of cards that have been out for a while, the prices change quite drastically in that time. So it's not necessarily a fair comparison. Um, and if you are watching this video sometime after upload, it might be worth just re rechecking out kind of the new prices. So I ran all of the benchmarks on my Dimmest Tech Easy XL test bench on i7 4770K overclocked to 4.5 GHz on an Asus Maximus 6 formula motherboard with a H100i Corsair Air Series fans, 16 gig of 2400 MHz Vengeance Pro memory, an X1200 power supply, and I'll cover all the kind of test settings and stuff that I used when we're looking at the individual graphs themselves. So out of the five different 1080p benchmarks that I ran for each of the cards, the first one was 3D Mark Firestrike on Extreme, and this is a synthetic benchmark, and what I did was I ran three times, took the average score from those results, and just kind of did that for each of the cards. Um, so as you can see, the 780i is in first place, which is kind of expected given its price and specs. Um, now the Poseidon 780 did actually score higher than the direct C2 780, even the both 780s, and that's just because the Poseidon's got both kind of a slightly higher base and boost clock than the direct C2 780. Um, so the Mars 760 is in third place, and the R9 290X is in second place, just slightly higher than the Mars 760. And then lastly we've got the Matrix 280X and the R9 290, and these just kind of stagger back from the R9 290X's results, just kind of as you'd expect. So the next test that I ran was Battlefield 4, and what I did with this was I actually played through a section of the game using Fraps to record the average frames per second. And I ran through this test five times rather than just three to kind of account for any human error, but I did find that after a bit of practice I was able to get all the results within one frames per second variant of each other. Um, and looking at this, this was just kind of the pattern that I expected to see throughout all the benchmarks given all the cards pricing and specs, with like the expensive 780i and the fancy Mars 760 in front, the R9 290X kind of leading the 780s and the R9 290, and then the Matrix 280X a bit behind given its kind of lower price and specs. 
So the next test that I ran was for Crisis 3, and for this I did the exact same thing with Battlefield 4, just ran through five times and used for apps to record the average frames per second. And as you can see, the Mars 760 actually came in first, which means Crisis is great for SLI scaling and really utilises that second GPU. I mean, it's actually pretty epic that the Mars did better than 780i, given that it's over £100 cheaper. Although, obviously, if you're not using a mini ITX board, I should mention that you can get two 760s for about £90 cheaper than the Mars 760. Um, now I was actually quite surprised to see the R9 290X do worse than the 2780s, given this game is AMD backed, I originally thought that maybe that would account for more in-game performance. So I then ran Crisis 3 at 2560 by 1440 just to see how all the cards would perform at a higher resolution. And what I did for these tests was I kept the test match exactly the same, left all the in-game settings exactly the same, leaving things like anti-aliasing on full. I literally, the only thing I changed was the resolution settings, so that the 2560 by 1440 results would be directly comparable to the 1080p results. And as you can see, there's nothing out of the ordinary here, everything's pretty much stayed the same, just with kind of 30 to 40% less frames per second than they got at 1080p. So the next test that I ran was Metro Last Light at 1080p, and for this test I just used the in-game benchmark and, and told it to run for three times, and took the average frames per second that it gave me at the end. Although with Metro, I left physics unticked, because I wanted both the AMD and NVIDIA cards to kind of be put under the same load during the tests. And as you can see, this time the Mars 760 didn't scale anywhere as near as well as it did with Crisis, being underneath the R9 290X, but obviously it still beat both the 780s. And it is actually worth mentioning that both this test and 3D Mark, the R9 290, even matched or beat the DirectCU2 GTX 780, even though it is slightly cheaper. So I then ran Metro Last Light in 2560 by 1440, and again all the cards stayed in line except for the Mars 760, where in 1080p it got third place, beaten by the R9 290X, but in 2560 by 1440 it was in second place. So the Mars 760 was the card least affected by the increase in resolution. Um, my guess to why would just be that Metro Last Light maybe SLI scales better at higher resolutions. So then the last 1080p benchmark that I ran was Unigen Valley, and this is a GPU-focused synthetic benchmark, and I ran this test three times and found the average score from those results. Um, and I want to start by mentioning that the Matrix Platinum r 9 x obviously it's a little bit outclassed in this video, as it's AMD's third fastest card in the R9 lineup, and obviously I've only gone two down in NVIDIA, so it would just have been nice if I'd also had a 770 to compare against in this video. Um, but neither of the AMD cards particularly shine with this test, the R9 290X falling in between the two 780s, which is a little disappointing given its great performance in the previous tests, and of course the R9 290 falling even further behind them. So then the last benchmark that I ran was Unigen Valley at 2560 by 1440 um, and this is another one of the tests where all of the 2560 by 1440 results mirrored the 1080p results. I then went on to overclock all of the graphics cards apart from the Poseidon Platinum GTX 780 as I didn't want to include all of its test results in this video and I used Asus's GPU tweak software to do so. So when overclocking the AMD cards, what I did was I set the fans manually to 60% and then just raised the clock as high as I could while keeping the cards stable and below AMD's temperature target threshold of 95 degrees. With the Nvidia cards, what I did was set the target temp to 90 degrees um, and then just exactly the same, raised the clock as high as I could while keeping the cards stable and below 90 degrees. Now I have actually seen on another site a reviewer apologise because they only managed to spend 12 hours overclocking the card they were reviewing and obviously I'm overclocking 6 cards here so I spent a lot less time on each of the cards. Um, but, you know, this is still taking me days to overclock them all, and I'm very happy with the final overclocking results that I got. So, after I'd overclocked all the cards, I rebenched them at 2560 by 1440 in both Valley and Metro to be able to compare results. So, starting with Metro, I want to say that the 290 makes the 290X look quite pointless, as the 290 overclocked percentage-wise so much higher than the 290X that their scores were almost identical, 
and you know given how much cheaper the 290 is i think that if you are planning on overclocking and you don't mind taking the risk of potentially having a car that doesn't overclock quite as well then the 290 is definitely the best car to go for out of the two of them and i think in fact looking at this graph and the results the 290 actually kind of looks like the best card in this test to choose out of all of them um but I have to say, I was quite disappointed with how the Matrix 280X overclocked, given that it's supposed to be like Asus's extreme overclocking variant of the 280X. Um, and like I said before, it comes with like onboard voltage control buttons and NN2 heatsink. But then lastly, we've got Unigen Valley in 2560 by 1440. And as you can see, we've got a similar story with the 290 and the 290X. Um, now, the GTX 780 did actually do better with this test, beating the 780 Ti, but only at stock, obviously, not when that's overclocked as well. So after I ran all the benchmarks, I moved all of the cards over to my current temporary rigs for noise tests. And for these, I left all the cards completely at stock, just how they come out of the box. Um, and for this, what I did was unplug my hard drive so they wouldn't make any noise, but I left all my fans exactly the same as I used them normally. So a hotter GPU would maybe cause the CPU cooler to run louder, and therefore increase the overall system noise. So while you're not actually hearing the individual volumes of the cards themselves, you are hearing them in a more kind of real world environment and it will sound actually more what it's like if you were to use the cards yourselves. So starting with the NVIDIA cards. So the next we've got the AMD cards. Now both the R9 290 and 290X have this little dip switch on them which lets you switch between quiet and uber mode. Now with AMD stock coolers, if the card got too hot, the clock would throttle, but I found that with the DirectC 2 coolers it wouldn't throttle at all, regardless of whether it's on quiet or uber mode, and all the switch seemed to do was just affect the temps and noise. So these are the AMD cards. So for those of you wondering, all of these tests were done after the system had been stress testing for half an hour, um, and all of the cards, their like fan speeds and temps were completely stable. So here are them all again quickly, just for comparison. I should probably point out that even though the 290 and 290X quiet modes are actually quieter than the other cards, obviously all the NVIDIA cards could be manually set to a quieter fan profile at the expense of the temps as well. So next we have power draw tests, and I took these while I was running the Crisis Free 2560-1440 benchmarks with the cards at stock. Um, and I should mention that each of the readings is for the entire system and not just for the cards by themselves, as this does give you more real world results. Although they should only be taken as approximation of power draw because I'm only using one of those small like mains power energy monitors for the results. Um, so as you can see, the Mars 760 has the highest power draw as of course it's two GPUs and SLI. Um, both the 780Ti and 290X have the same power draw, which shows that given the benchmarks, even though the 780Ti is the more powerful card, it is more energy efficient. Um, and the 280X is pretty much the same power draw as the 290, and this is because the 280X is essentially just a rebranded 7970 GHz edition card, and of course uses older, kind of less efficient architecture. 
So then lastly, before moving on to the conclusion, just to kind of add a bit of fun to the video, um, I've pikey'd an idea off Top Gear and made the Tasty Wall, although obviously with graphics cards rather than cars. And this is all just based on the card's appearance and how sexy they are, so it is kind of a bit subjective and each to their own kind of thing. Um, now I know there are some people out there who don't think that appearance of graphics cards matters at all, just comes down to how they perform, but I have seen some people spend a lot of money on their rig getting it to look like exactly how they want it and the sexiest they can make it, so I do still think it's an important feature. Um, but in first place, I've got the Mars 760, which, as I said in the quick initial look, is by far the sexiest card that I've seen in real life. I do just really love it. I think it's really sexy. I really love how it looks. Um, in second place, I've got the Matrix R9 280X, which just looks like a complete beast, um, even though it is only 280X. In third place, we've got the Poseidon 780. I really love what they've done with the cooler. I also really love like the ROG logo and how it matches the ROG logo you get on some of the ROG motherboards. I just really think it's pretty when things match. Um, and then fourth, like finally, tied in fourth place, we've got 780Ti, 780E, the 290X and the 290, which all have the DirectSU 2 coolers. Um, so this is where I think all of these seven cards fit, obviously. If I just quickly add all of the cards that I've used since starting Tasty PC, just so you can kind of see where they sit in relation, um, as I'm hoping to use this wall in all future kind of graphics card videos, and adding new cards as I use them so you can see where they fit. Um, but let me know what you think of this idea. If you like it, I might move it across to things like cases and coolers and stuff like that. To conclude this video, I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what I think of each of the cards. So, starting with the Matrix 280X, I do really love the cooler, but I can't help but feel like it's on the wrong GPU. And that I'd probably actually bet money on Asus making something like a Matrix 290 at some point. Although something I found with that triple stock cooler design from like previous experience is that it has to be in a single card rig, otherwise they're just so sandwiched together that you're constantly worrying about their temps. Um, so keeping with the AMD cards, with the DirectCU 2, 290X and 290, I was actually surprised with how great the cards are, um, and definitely how competitive they are with the 780 and 780i. I mean they do run quite hot, but that is manageable as long as you've got good airflow in your case. Now the thing that I found obviously with the overclocking results is that the 290 overclocked pretty much matched the 290X overclocked. So I think if you are looking to get one of those cards and you're planning on overclocking then I would definitely go for the 290 over the 290X given how much deeper it is and the scores matched. But of course if you do that then you've got the kind of potential issue of your card maybe not overclocking quite as well. Um, so then with the Mars 760, now there is a lot of hate for this card, and a lot of people really don't see the point in it, but it's probably my favourite card out of the ones here, as it was it was first in a lot of the tests, it was fine with 2560 by 1440, it's fourth most expensive, or fourth least expensive, depending on which way you look at it, and SLI scaling across games nowadays is pretty good anyway, but of course you could get two separate 760s for less, so... Um, with the Poseidon 780, obviously I'm going to look at that in its own review, and with the GTX 780 Ti, if you want the current fastest single GPU for gaming and money's no option, then get a GTX 780 Ti. Um, so unfortunately I couldn't include any non-Asus cards in this video, but you know this is only my first ever GPU comparison for the channel, and I'm hoping to do more in the future which also include um, cards from other brands. But if for those of you wondering why this video is Asus only, I will put like a quick explanation in the description below, along with a link to all of the cards in case you're interested in any of them. But this video has taken over two weeks to make, so I hope that you do like it. If you do, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already wanted more of my videos. And thanks for watching.